welcome. Welcome to City 17. You have chosen, or been chosen, to relocate to one of our finest remaining urban centres. Welcome to City 17. It's safer here. Right, today's video is about taking apart and having a look at this, and more specifically, for me personally, seeing if there's any difference in the 2TB drive compared with others, although I'm not going to be bringing any other pulled apart hard drives into video, so if you haven't taken apart a hard drive, I suggest you do so. It's quite interesting. So, we will start by unscrewing but will save you the troubles of watching back. With all screws removed, this is fairly heavy, so I'm expecting more than two platters in it. Now, some of you might be wondering why tear apart a two terabyte hard drive. It's dead. I got it to a working state so I could recover the data off of it, but it died. Yeah, not everything you pull out of skips good. So we'll pop the lid off, and it's reasonably stuck down. Interestingly, though, you might be able to see this on the video. You might be able to see that the gasket is clear. Not too common, but it does pop up on hard drives every so often. So we pop it open and see if there's any difference compared to just about every other hard drive in existence. Let's be honest, since they started using voice coils, hard drives pretty much look the same inside. Yep, early 90s ones look the same as the latest hard drives. Now the gasket's sealed down quite well. We and we have three plat as well. It's pretty much as you would expect. Looks like a hard drive from 1996, except it has this nice parking mechanism because older hard drives tend to park their discs actually on the platter. Newer ones have these lovely parking mechanisms, which basically mean it cannot head crash. And if we can get it to a good position we can demonstrate it, we can see we have a three platter design. Now the only difference compared to a standard hard drive, don't worry, it's dead. We don't care too much about damaging the platters. We just created a dead section. <laughs> I wonder how many sectors that ruined. They're actually quite a bit thicker than your normal hard disk platters. Now this runs at... can I see it anywhere specifically? Um, no, I can't see off the bat what speed it runs at, but it's got a 64 meg cache. No, I don't know if that exists on the actual hard drive or if it exists on the... Um, on a ROM chip on the circuit board. Now the magnets are pretty bog standard neodymium. Now yeah, they're reasonably strong, as neodymiums tend to be, but eh, definitely good for beam robots. But the difference is, actually, interestingly, the case doesn't always drive the screws through these. Quite often they're mounted on the edges. So that's actually an interesting fact. So this would actually be really easy to reuse this magnet for other stuff like beam robot pendulums. Excellent. It's strong enough to use as well. Now as usual, you got your little controller chip on the side of the voice coil. Head read right arm. Which goes down to your board under here, so we'll just put the magnet to one side, flip the drive over, and show you the circuit board, which is tiny and not particularly interesting compared to older hard. So this is pretty much all that exists on a modern hard drive circuit board. You've got your main microcontroller here. You've got your motor driver chip, complete with a fuse. You've got some RAM memory, which might be something to do with the 64 meg cache, although that looks like RAM. We've got a little 8-pinned chip that looks like some sort of EEPROM, but I don't know the part number off by hand, but it's made by Windbond, and they have been known to manufacture memory chips. 
and the connectors made by Foxconn because just about every computer in this day and age is made by Foxconn. They started off making connectors, now they make entire computers for companies like Dell. I somewhat wonder if com companies design their own computers anymore or whether they just get Foxconn to build it and just br paste their name on it somewhere. Which is quite depressing really, but basically yeah. Foxconn are the ones who truly build the computers. No one else does. Not to my knowledge. They even build Apple's computers. You can even put into debate whether Apple even designs their own computers anymore, bearing in mind they're all on the same architecture. So yeah, that's inside a modern hard drive. Not any, re not really much difference to a hard drive made in 1996.